In this post, we'll look at how to build fully serverless and backendless mobile applications with AWS Amplify and React Native that include features like authentication, analytics, a managed data layer, storage and push notifications. Update, this article currently uses the AWS Mobile CLI. The AWS Mobile CLI will be deprecated in the future, the preferred way is to use the Amplify CLI. The commands are similar as well as the configurations. See the documentation here for any questions. When building a real-world mobile application there are a ton of essential basic requirements. You need to have a way to authenticate users, you want to track user engagement and usage, and you probably want to be able to send push notifications and maybe base these messages on events or user behavior. Then you have to manage your application data and are probably dealing with multiple REST endpoints. You're also usually dealing with media such as images and videos and you hopefully want to be able to handle offline use cases so that the app continues to work whether or not they are online. More and more developers and companies are adopting and taking advantage of managed services in order to lessen their dependence on building and maintaining their own infrastructure and having to create this functionality from scratch, lowering the cost and decreasing the complexity of their back-end development infrastructure in the process. It's now even possible for a single developer without a lot of traditional back-end experience to be able to build and ship a fully featured application by taking advantage of these managed back-end services, bringing about what I consider the next revolution of architecture that will dominate in the future, back-end-less application development. Some of the more popular existing use cases that come to mind are push notification services, authentication providers, and analytics services. There are now also services like AWS App Sync that offer completely managed data layers so you can also offload the complexity and work of building and maintaining your backend and API to a managed service with a single graph QL endpoint. In this post, we'll look at how to leverage the AWS Mobile CLI to quickly spin up these types of services and add new this new functionality to your React Native application using the AWS Amplified JavaScript SDK. The AWS Amplified JavaScript SDK was created to provide a unified API across many of AWS services and managed services. There is first-class support for JavaScript frameworks like React Native, React, and Angular. Getting started creating the React Native app first will create a new React Native project using either the React Native CLI or the Create React Native App CLI. Next, we'll change into the directory. Installing the AWS Mobile CLI The AWS Mobile CLI offers a way to quickly and easily spin up new AWS Mobile Hub projects from the command line. To get started we'll now need to install and configure the AWS Mobile CLI if you don't already have it installed. Once the CLI is installed and configured, we need to go ahead and create a new AWS Mobile project. From within the new React Native Project root directory create a new AWS mobile project. Now, answer the default to all questions from Osmobile in it. This will also install a couple of local dependencies to our project. You should now see AWS Amplify and AWS Amplify React Native in your package.json. Finally, we need to link an OS Amplify Native dependency. We now have a new mobile hub project created in our AWS dashboard. You can view the project and configuration at any time by running Osmobile console from the root of the React Native directory. Configuring the React Native app with your new AWS mobile hub project. Now that the mobile hub project has been created and the dependencies are all installed, we can configure the React Native project to recognize our configuration. In index.js, let's add the following lines of code. User sign up and sign in. The first thing we'll do is look at how we can add user sign up and sign in. To do so we'll need to enable it in our mobile hub project. User sign up and sign in. The first thing we'll do is look at how we can add user sign up and sign in. To do so we'll need to enable it in our mobile hub project. 
Now user sign up and sign in is enabled through Amazon Cognito and we can immediately start signing users up and in. If we look at the docs we'll notice that there are two distinct ways to do this. 1. We can use the React components and higher order components for pre-configured functionality and UI. 2. We can write this functionality from scratch using the auth class which contains methods like auth.signup and auth.sign in. React Native Components let's first check out how to use the with Authenticator Hawk from AWS Amplifier React Native. In app.js, below the React Native imports let's import the with Authenticator Hawk. Next, instead of having the default export on the class we'll use the Hawk as the default export. Next, run the app. Now, we have a completely functioning sign up, sign in process in front of our main app. To achieve similar functionality you can also use the authenticator component to wrap whatever main component you would like to authenticate. In the wrapped component, app, you will have access to a prop called auth state that you can use to conditionally render. Auth state will have values of sign in, sign up, and signed in among others to properly identify the current authentication state. Auth class. We can also use the auth class to authenticate users. Auth has over 30 methods including sign up, confirm sign up, sign in, confirm sign in, and change password. You can also do things like change MFA type to tote and update user attributes. When you sign in using Auth, sign in, the session data will be persisted and can be accessed at any time using the auth.current authenticated user method. Once you have signed in new users, you can view the configuration in AWS Mobile Hub or go to https colon slash slash console.aws.amazon.com slash cognito and view the users and Amazon Cognito configuration for the app. To view your current project configurations you can always type in. Then click on resources in the top right corner, and click on the resource you would like to view. Osmobile Console Analytics Analytics events can be tracked using the Analytics class. We can also call events with more detailed attributes. To view the analytics data we can go to the AWS Mobile Hub project in the console, again clicking on Resources in the top right corner, and choosing Pinpoint and clicking on your service. Storage Amplify has a storage class that allows easy interop with React Native making the storage and access of media like images and media much easier, working seamlessly with Amazon S3. We can enable storage in the AWS Mobile Hub project from the command line. Now we can use the storage class in our app. We can use storage to place items into storage and read them from storage. We can also fairly easily place media to storage, assuming we've installed and configured React Native Fetch Blob. To view the S3 bucket, we can run Osmobile Console from the command line, click on Resources, and under Amazon S3 Buckets click on the User Files bucket. Lambda Functions When you hear serverless you may typically think of a Lambda function. We can set one of these up manually and connect it with our existing AWS Amplify resources, or we can use the AWS Mobile CLI to set this up for us. Let's continue using the CLI to create the new Lambda function. To add a Lambda function as well as have it configured for you off the bat with some basic configuration, run the following command. You can also pass in the prompt flag if you would like to specify the configuration around your Lambda function, Osmobile Cloud API enable prompt, but for our case we'll just stick with the defaults. Osmobile Cloud API enable will automatically create an API and API gateway as well as a Lambda function and associate the two together. Now, we can look in our project in Osmobile slash backend slash cloud API to see some new configuration. Here, we see we have another new folder called sample lambda holding a sample lambda function that was deployed for us. The lambda function that was created for us is using the AWS serverless express package to spin up an express server with some pre-configured endpoints. 
These endpoints can be updated in our local code and pushed up to the server using the Osmobile push command as we'll see in a second. We can also add new endpoints by configuring our local code as well as the cloud logic configuration in our AWS mobile hub project in the console. Let's update the app.get method on the slash items path in Osmobile slash backend slash cloud API slash sample. Lambda. Next we need to push this new API and configuration to our AWS mobile hub project. Now, we'll open the AWS mobile hub console to get the API name. Click on cloud logic and copy the API name, minus sample, cloud, API. Now we can test out the Lambda function. In app.js, create a new component did mount lifecycle method. Managed API and Data Layer AWS Amplify offers a GraphQL client that works with any GraphQL API. In our case, we'll be looking at AWS App Sync, which is a fully managed GraphQL service. With AWS App Sync, you can have a GraphQL API that interacts with any data source you would like. There are built-in data sources like Amazon DynamoDB, AWS Lambda function or Amazon Elasticsearch, and with a Lambda function you can access any service or database you would like seamlessly through the single API layer that is GraphQL in the form of your AppSync API. There are a couple of GraphQL clients that work with AWS AppSync. AWS Amplify has an API category that works seamlessly with any GraphQL API including AWS App Sync. We can enable AWS App Sync from the AWS Mobile CLI, but doing so will create an auto-generated schema and data source. Instead, we'll visit the console to create and manually configure a custom API and configuration from the console. In this example, we'll look at a basic Toto app. To get started, Visit https colon slash slash console dot aws dot amazon dot com slash app sync and click on create api. From here, give the api a name, choose custom schema, then click create. Now the api has been created and we're given some information including the api url and api key. Click schema in the left menu and create a basic schema with a type and a query. Click Save then click the Create Resources button. Choose Defaults and click Create at the bottom of the screen. Create Resources will automatically provision a DynamoDB database, additional GraphQL schema for multiple operations including queries, mutations, and subscriptions, and resolvers that tie the GraphQL operations to the data source. Next, Click Queries in the left menu to test out a mutation and query to make sure everything is working properly. Now we can test out the API from our client-side application. First, we need to update our client-side configuration to identify our AppSync API. Create a new file called appsync-config.js in the root of the project. Next, where we configured the Amplify client, Let's update it to also recognize our app sync configuration. Now, we can easily create and execute operations against the API using the API category and GraphQL operation helper from AWS Amplify. In app.js, let's add a query. Push notifications Push notifications are available for both Android and iOS in AWS Amplify. To enable the push notification service, you should go to the Pinpoint console by running Osmobile console and clicking on Resources then under Amazon Pinpoint click the link to your service. The initial configuration for push notifications takes more time than any of the other services because we not only need to update some configuration for React Native, we also need to set up the actual services through Apple and Google. I've written an article with a video walking through the entire process of setting up an iOS project here. The setup for Android can be found here. Once your project is configured you can handle push notifications from with the app. 
Conclusion I am a developer advocate at AWS Mobile working with projects like AWS App Sync and AWS Amplify, and the founder of React Native Training. If you enjoyed this article, please clap n number of times and share it. Thanks for your time.